Hey everyone, my name is Janaid and I'm a graduate data analyst working for a financial services firm in central London and in today's video I'll be talking you through a day in my life as a data analyst working from home. We have recently been working on a piece of software for some clients which has been a huge project and that's taken up most of my time recently. I've been responsible for the data that's going to be ingested into that piece of software so a lot of my time has been dedicated to that. There are also data sprints I'll be attending soon with the clients for the software and the developers of the software and I'll be making a video of the trip for when I attend those sprints, so keep an eye out for that. When I'm working from home, my day usually starts around 8 a.m., but today it started a little bit earlier than that because I had a call from an overseas client who had some information we'd requested from them and they'd been able to source that information. We needed that information for some of the projects we were working on for them, for some of the analysis we were doing for them, and we ended up setting up a string of weekly meetings up until the end of March. That call ran from about 7.30 to around 8. 30-ish in the morning. Now once I've had a chance to take a preliminary look at the information the client provided, I'll shoot them an email confirming that everything looks to be in order and then what I'll do, which is what I usually do every single morning, is read the news. Now in particular I'll be scanning the Financial Times, the Wall Street Journal and some profit warnings that have come into straight into my inbox from alerts we have set up in our databases. These have come in overnight, so I'll give them a quick scan as well. If you're working in financial services, there are quite a few factors that can affect the market. A new actuarial regulation, an accounting standard change, a company undergoing severe losses. And so staying on top of any developments within the global economy is a key is a key part of my role. I'll also check my inbox to see if anything's come in overnight, whether I've been emailed by an analyst or a client to see whether anything needs to be done straight away that morning. Once I've logged in, the team will have our morning meeting where everyone discusses the projects they're working on, progress on those projects, and it's usually in these meetings if anyone needs any help, if anyone needs any assistance, if anyone needs uh, particular information, this is usually the time that you'll be able to ask for it. For example, the economists needed help sourcing some audit fee data for a select few firms, and so sourcing that data fell upon the shoulders of one of the data analysts. They took it on that meeting. So what the analyst will do is check all of the databases, the available databases we have for that data. Or in this case, since they have all the names of the firms they need to search for, they could even go to one of our SQL feeds and use a where clause to search for company names as a list of strings and return audit fees. So pretty simple. Once that meeting's concluded, I'll hang on to the call with another analyst and my manager to clarify some project parameters, to finalize some project parameters. We finalized some complex cross-organizational dashboards we were working on and these dashboards were due to be used by multiple teams across the organization so we were just finalizing the parameters that would be included in each dashboard for each different team. There's been a slight shift in us data analysts being slightly more on the side of data consultants or scientists even. We want to focus less on the manual side of things so instead of having to create dashboards from scratch for clients or business as usual tasks we want to focus more on the machine learning side, the analytical modeling side and the AI side of things and I'll go into I'll go into more detail about that later on. Between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. I'll complete some ad hoc work that I was allocated during the morning meeting as a data analyst, there's always small projects or small business as usual tasks that you'll be completing alongside any other large projects you're working on. There's always something There's always something that you have to do. It could be fixing or updating a dashboard, monitoring a new stream of data, providing a client with market sector intelligence or even business as usual tasks. For example, a weekly monitoring publication, the team or the division master producers could be working on that as well. In between that time, I also hopped on a daily scrum call with project managers, the software developers and other analysts who were involved in working on that big piece of software. In those daily scrum meetings, the scrum master will ask everyone how their tasks are doing. So you'll have tasks set up for each phase of testing for the piece of software. And so the scrum master will ask everyone how their tasks are going how progress is and whether there are any blockers for anyone that need to be fixed. If you're working on a project like this, it's likely you'll be using a project management software. It could be, for example, Azure DevOps, where you'll have all your tasks listed out and you'll have columns where you can drag your tasks to when they're completed or whether they're ready for QA or if there's a bug, you can raise that within that project management software as well. Once that daily scrum call was complete, I spent some time rechecking the information the client had sent over that morning before sending it to the economists to conduct some econometric analysis on. The client had seen a drop in their year-on-year -year revenue and so we'd requested some information from them. They weren't a listed company so finding some, some of the financials we were after was quite difficult but since we had a direct line 
straight through the company themselves, the firm themselves. We asked them for that information. That information that they provided, coupled with the information we already had on the company, meant we would be able to conduct some really thorough analysis on why, what might have been causing the issue. We'd conduct a thorough analysis of all of their products and services and try to get to the bottom of why that revenue drop might have happened, what might be causing that issue. Around about 1 p.m. I'll go and make lunch. So while I'm watching the UFC and eating steak and potatoes, let's talk about what a data analyst actually does. Now my role where I work is a lot like a startup. The team I work in is a lot like a like a startup. So my role is, my role is, can be quite varied, but in general as a data analyst, you'll be someone who collects, processes, and analyzes data to help organizations make informed data-driven decisions. You work with large data sets using statistical tools and software to identify trends, patterns, and insights that can help guide a business's strategies. The insights and analysis that you conduct can be presented in reports, models, or visualizations like dashboards. In financial services, a data analyst's responsibilities can be analyzing financial data, market trends, insights and intelligence, conducting financial analysis like calculating financial ratios, forecasting or modeling to provide insights that can improve your client's financial products, optimize investment strategies or even manage risk, forecasting market movements. For example, there was a client who wanted to know why Thomas Cook had undergone liquidation back in, I think it was 2018. They wanted to know what indicators there were that caused Thomas Cook to have such a drastic drop in their share price before they'd undergone liquidation. What might have been the cause so that's where econometric analysis comes in, where the economists will assess the financial landscape at the time for the company, will forecast what their share price might have been had they not underwent liquidation, had they continued to operate at their current rate or their last operating rate. So that's also on the side of assessing financial health of a company for a client. I personally work closely with financial advisors, actuaries even, and risk managers and executives to provide them with data-driven insights, data-driven analysis. And all the while I have to make sure all of the analysis and insights that I provide comply with the regulation. That's why it's so important to stay on top of all developments and news that happen within the global economy. Now, earlier on in the video, I mentioned that the team I work in is sort of moving more to the data consultant side of things. We're still data analysts, but we want to focus less on manual tasks and business as usual tasks. So if, for example, we can teach clients or teams across the organization how to build basic reports and dashboards, and then where they need any help or any technical advice, we can come in and step in almost as consultants to help them. In essence, that should free up a lot more time for us. And so we can focus more resource onto the automation, machine learning and analytical modeling side of things. In the afternoon, after lunch, I had some data validation to complete for some of the data, for the next batch of data that was going to be inputted into the software. Here I'll upload new tables into SQL and update the master data model. From 2 p.m. to 3.30, I had to attend a training session on AI and machine learning. We had three professors from leading Russell Group Universities come and give us a presentation on some key tools that they were developing with their doctorate students. Quite often I've seen what happens is if we can get access to the back end of these tools, then we can sort of amend and shape them to apply them to our specific use cases. And in, it's in these presentations where we discuss these kinds of possibilities. These sessions are run quite frequently and the firm I work in is quite good at setting these up as part of learning and development. More often than not, they end up being quite fruitful and interesting. From one of the previous sessions we ran, we actually asked one of the professors who was presenting to act as a consultant for the software that we're creating. We actually took them on as a consultant because they had a lot of experience with the software development cycle. Following that, from then till about 5 p.m., I'll start prepping for a stakeholder presentation that I had to give the following day. And once all that prep is complete, then I'll log off. And there you have it, a day in my life working as a data analyst, a remote data analyst in London. This was a pretty typical day. You'll usually have a mix of business as usual, daily tasks alongside a couple of large projects that you'll be working on. There's always something new to learn, especially with especially with the whole legion of AI tools and software that, that have recently been released. So there's also an aspect machine learning or AI that we're looking to input or include into the, the final master version of the software. That's another thing, a feedback loop is important, especially when you're working on such a big piece of software, when you've won such a large contract 
you have to maintain a feedback loop with prospective clients to see what what things they need and one of the things they mentioned was an inclusion of ai or machine learning to some degree so that's also something we're looking at developing that's all for this video if you like this video check out some of my other day in the life as a data analyst videos i'll link some up in the corner and then down in the description hope this video is useful if it was be sure to leave a like and subscribe thanks for watching and i will see you guys in the next one